Jota Tato, I'm very sorry in advance if I can't quite match Tuku in terms of humour, but I hope what will follow will be of interest to some of you. Um, as Carol mentioned, I'm well aware that everyone in this room is here because of a belief in service beyond the self and helping other people. So what I've decided to talk about today is some of the experiences that I've had through Volunteer Wellington, which may be slightly... Uh, closer to the grassroots of the volunteering sector in Wellington than some people might have come in a while. Um, I hope to emphasise the diversity and inclusiveness that volunteering brings to Wellington as a city and how incredibly vibrant a community it creates. First, a bit about myself. I, as Carol said, came to Wellington from Hamilton, not wanting to go to Waikato University and instead deciding to come to Victoria. It's very easy as an 18-year-old student to come to a new city and think, right, I'll make friends at my hall of residence, I will drink lots and go to lots of parties and have a great time. It's then very easy to get bored. And I was lucky enough at the beginning of my second year at Victoria to come across the Volunteer Wellington stand at the Careers Expo, I had no idea what volunteering actually meant beyond standing on the street and shaking a bucket. So when I was approached by one of the Volunteer Wellington staff saying, hey, would you consider joining up? Have you got skills to contribute? I thought, what on earth do you mean? Anyone can stand holding a bucket and asking people for money, and frankly, I don't think I could do that. I'm not, not great like that. Turns out it meant so much more. I went along for an informal chat with one of the interviewers and was placed with the Wesley Community Action Centre who run a bi-weekly mentoring session for Tongan youth in the Wellington community. The idea is to support Tongan students who wish to pursue the scholarship exams in NCEA, ones who are doing particularly well but lack the family support to encourage them to go and pursue that higher level of exams. After a while of doing that, I thought, you know, this is really great. There are some really interesting people here, people from all walks of life, and this is something I would like to get more involved in. So a couple of months later, when an interviewing spot opened up at Volunteer Wellington, I put my name forward. Since 2011, in August, I have worked every week as an interviewer. This is what has made me consider myself a Wellingtonian. Every week, someone from a completely different walk of life comes into the room saying, I want to contribute. For whatever reason it is, be they a high-level CEO who has started stepping back from work and has a little bit of extra time to contribute to a new startup organisation, or a long-term beneficiary who has decided that actually through volunteering they're going to add to their skill set. No matter what the background or the reason, everyone has the same aim to contribute to their community and to learn. After a couple of months of doing this, I found out that there was actually an opportunity to interview for a position on the Board of Trustees. Um, as I've been talking to a couple of people about already, the um, Volunteer Wellington had decided to diversify its board membership and were looking for younger people. I thought, that's a bit silly, they're just going to be nursing me along the whole way. What can a 20-year-old know about governance? But sure enough, just like everyone else who goes on the board, it's possible to learn. And after many sessions sitting down with the accountant, I think I finally got a bit of a grasp on how it all works. I've had what I realise is a very privileged experience going through this organisation and I know it's not necessarily typical. However, I'm not alone in being a student who has gained so much valuable experience through volunteering. In 2013, we had 685 students coming through our door and looking for an organisation to be matched with. Most of these people do get placed, whether it be for one weekend of voluntary work or for the length of their degree. The stats aren't in for last year, but I believe we were looking at about 720 students like me, all coming through and wanting to contribute and wanting to get to know Wellington in a way that they couldn't quite do by just being at university. So that is my story, but obviously I want to share with you some very different ones from people who have come through the doors in the last few years. 
If you have any questions, obviously there'll be time at the end, but if it's completely burning, feel free to yell out. The first story I'd like to share is Isaac's. He arrived as a refugee from Western Sudan a few years ago. He had been working as a medical professional in a hospital which was um, bombed. He lost both his legs and arrived here in 2011. He was one of over 600 new migrants who came through Volunteer Wellington's doors looking for a way to get to know this new environment. Of those 600, over 100 each year are here as refugees. Here Isaac is pictured at the Wellington Hospital. He works there as a volunteer preparing emergency packs to give to families who arrive at the hospital not having had time to prepare anything. He's pictured there with his manager, Trish. She manages more than 500 volunteers throughout the region's hospitals who all contribute like Isaac, regardless of their physical ability. He says of his fellow volunteers that we work like a family. And it's stories like these which I think do a pretty good job at keeping interviewers and the staff at Volunteer Wellington in their jobs, hearing feedback from people like him. From a very different background, we have Hari. He's from Chennai in India. He's a self-confessed telecommunications and networking geek. He, um, at the time the story was put together, he was consulting for Chorus, but he wanted to find a way to get a bit more of a work-life balance and, again, came to Volunteer Wellington. Um, he's pictured here with Pauline Harper, who some of you may know. She's one of the co-managers at Volunteer Wellington. She was in the process of preparing a presentation to give it a national volunteer centre hui and she thought, hey, let's see if we can use Hattie's skills. He ended up creating an animated video for Volunteer Wellington to use at this meeting and has since, because of its wonderful quality, been roped in on many occasions to prepare presentations, videos, seminars for organisations that he's worked for. As with most of Volunteer Wellington's work, it's very collaborative and he's pictured here with um, Mandy of Ngati Kahungunu and she came in and sang Volunteer Wellington's Waiata to be the background music for this video and I believe they've both been called back to make subsequent ones since. Of his experiences, Hadi has always just said, it's the right thing to do. How else would I get to know this place? Kathy pictured up the top here as an occupational therapist. She um, works at Berenpool's Vincentian Home. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with this, but they are a wonderful organisation in terms of their volu voluntary aspects. Um, Kathy says that not everyone who comes in wanting to volunteer with the elderly people are necessarily suitable, but she does a really good job at trying to match individuals with residents at the home. Um, the young man here is named Bright Shao, and he's from Liaoning province in the north of China. Now, he came out here as a student, and while he was having a great time, he said he really missed his grandparents because he had lived with them for most of the time as a young boy and really missed that kind of contact. So he's pictured here um, with Moira Reed, who just absolutely got along with him so well. It became a relationship where they both learn a lot from each other and in fact while most of the volunteers say that they are doing all the learning from the elderly residents there was in fact a bit of a switch here. Bright had always been a keen gardener, well I don't know about keen but had always been forced to help by his own grandparents out in the garden and decided that that was something he could do with Moira who had actually hated gardening previously but has now apparently developed a keen interest in it and they catch up once a week and potter around in the garden when the weather's nice enough. For Bright, this made his experience out here as an exchange student in a country with a completely different language a much, much more bearable one. It gave him the sort of contact that he was familiar with, it made him feel comfortable, and it really gave him a quick way into the local community, something that I doubt many international students at the uni halls of residence can get without that level of communication.
From a completely different background, again, we have a lot of volunteers who work at the um, Susanna Bear Compassion Centre and the Soup Kitchen. At the Soup Kitchen, guests are always encouraged to become volunteers. The centre is there to serve guests, but equally they try to instill an attitude of service to others. This is Gary, he's of Ngāti Kahungunu. He's lived on the streets for over 30 years. He hasn't seen his family for about 40, but for the last few years he has been a regular guest and volunteer at the soup kitchen. He goes in most days and gives advice to people who are using the computers there. See, the centre provides computers so that people can put together CVs, they can look on the internet for jobs, and they need people to help because not everyone, even in this day and age, not everyone has great computer skills, so that's what Gary does. He also gives really strong support to those with mental health issues and has become a really invaluable asset for people working at the soup kitchen. He's pictured here with Pip, who's the centre administrator. Um, she says that the, min the ministries, um, sorry, she says that the mission of the centre is support all in need to be able to live with dignity, and she said it's through people like Gary that they're able to achieve that. Now, Volunteer Wellington refers dozens of volunteers to the soup kitchen each year. It's become increasingly well known as a centre that does really amazing work. And last I heard, they actually have a waiting list of people wishing to give their time to help there. Now, finally, a very different kind of story. This is um, Wayne. He's a typical Wellington suit who works at Treasury. Now, Treasury came on board with Volunteer Wellington's Employees in the Community scheme. Now, what that involves is employers, be they from the public or private sector, coming to Volunteer Wellington and saying, look, we want to use some of our community responsibility or service hours for a good cause. And Volunteer Wellington then helps by liaising with local community organisations and setting up really valuable partnerships. Now, the partnership that has been set up for Treasury has been an exceptional one and that has been long-lasting. Treasury came with a really clear aim. They wanted to help with nutrition and literacy. So Judy, our wonderful coordinator, went out and she um, ended up going to Cannons Creek to Windley School and liaising with the principal there. So what has been set up is a weekly breakfast and reading program and... Um, staff from the Treasury go and take turns um, reading with the children as well as providing, delivering, helping the set up and distribution of the food. The principal, um, who at the time of writing and I think still Reese McKinley, says that it's encouraging for the kids seeing people like Wayne, like these other Treasury staff coming in and not only setting a really good example by giving their own time, but also providing really good um, academic support, even if it is only for one or two hours a week. The team from Treasury um, is one of only many across the city. There are thousands of employees who end up coming through Volunteer Wellington and um, heading into community organisations. I know that um, ANZ is really committed to this and each year sends dozens of people to different organisations. Um, sometimes it's a one-off beach clean-up, other times it's long-term helping Habitat for Humanity for example or going into schools and helping with maintenance and putting a new coat of paint on foster care houses, that kind of thing. There are currently 40 business friends who are part of this programme and each of them continue to do amazing work. So what I've hoped through these stories is that you've seen perhaps an example of volunteering that you hadn't come across before. Like I know every single person in this room has such rich experience, probably far, far more than myself or many of the people at Volunteer Wellington. But hopefully some of these stories have shown you something new, given you something to think about, perhaps made you think that there's someone you can suggest get into volunteering. So many people don't think of it immediately as an option when they're looking for different paths in life. If there is anything in these stories that has made you think you would like to get um, your hands stuck in and doing a bit more in your very busy schedules, then I'm sure Volunteer Wellington would be happy to find you a match. Um, 
I hope you found these stories interesting. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Dave. Um, funding comes from a huge variety of sources, so COGS funding would be the main one. Um, lotteries, grants are another big source. I know that um, funding applications are made to uh, the Office of Ethnic Affairs, I believe, because at the moment they have a settling in fund, so um, projects that help new migrants settle into the community are eligible for that funding. Um, I believe other organisations, perhaps J.R. McKenzie, um, or NICO Foundation. Um, NICO Foundation actually um, provide funding for the Great Volunteer Week each year, and um, that allows Volunteer Wellington to sort of run awards to give recognition, not just to volunteers, but to managers of really good, robust um, volunteer programmes throughout the city. Oh, sorry, one thing to add to that. Um, a portion of the funding actually comes from work and income. Volunteer Wellington has set up a partnership with work and income whereby beneficiaries who come through us who are placed with a, in a volunteering role and continue volunteering in that role um, are sort of recognised by work and income for that. Um, so case managers are encouraged to send their clients our way um, or directly to volunteer organisations if that works for them. But that has proved to be a really successful way to get beneficiaries to build up really good skills.